Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Johnny. Thank you also, Brother Brother Terry, and also Sister Danielle, and all the rest of you. We thank you all so much, Brother Dave, who works tirelessly behind the scenes. And I say tirelessly because that brother be working you all. Brother Dave be working, he don't he doesn't complain, he just does the work. I don't care if it's loading something, if it's loading something physically at the at the building or if it's loading something on the internet. I mean, Dave is just, we got some workers here. Sister Liz, I, you know, I have, I'll start telling, I'll start naming all of you all. And the rest of you, when I see your faces, you're working right there with me. You know, so we appreciate you all. Sister Elwanda, all of you all. Um, so praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I was just thinking back in Jeremiah, I think it's Jeremiah 33, 3. Uh, um, the Lord told his people, call to me and I will answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things of which you don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I was thinking about that. He told his people, don't worry about it, okay? And just ask me. Just come to me. Why, you've got some things that I know about that you don't even know about. And a lot of times we're going through struggles, we're going through trials, and we don't know who to go to. I suggest you call on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he knows some things that you don't know about. I'm, I'm sorry, but he, I'm not sorry. I mean, I'm sorry to say, for those who, who, who don't understand that, he's got some things that, 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 that you don't know how to deal with. And he's got some things that your bosses don't know about or your, your parents don't know about. He said, but if you call to me, I'm going to put all this to rest. I'm going to take care of you. And that means that we should have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. You won't know this unless you get to know the Lord. I tried to handle things on my own until I was 49 years old. The Lord let me bump into walls and people and everything else that I was running into. Uh, uh, and, and he took care of me. He took care of me. But when I got to know him, I'm telling you, when you get to know him, now that devil's going to continue to try to try to stymie you and get you to look away from God. But God says, just call to me. And he's, he, he gives us that through the Bible. And in Psalm 37, 3, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. That's what it says. So see, it's a win-win situation. When you come to know the Lord, the Lord knows you're serious and he comes to help you even more. Amen. So keep that in mind. Give Jesus a chance. Give him a chance not to uh, 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 just for uh, things that you want. Uh, give yourself a chance is what I should say by letting the Lord chart the way for you. He's got things that he wants to show you that you have no idea of at this present time. So come on and, and join him and let him do what he wants to do in your life for his glory and your good. Amen? All right. So let's get to the message today. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you again, Lord, that we get to sit before you. We get to sit at your table again, Lord, and be fed. So we thank you for the meal you're serving up today. May, our, uh, may we ready our palates. May we steady up our hearts and ears, our minds, and open up to what you have to nourish us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, so we're continuing with our sermon series, Are You Fit for the Fight? Now, I call that title out two or three different ways. I'm going to keep it simple this time. I'm not going to try to confuse anybody. I wasn't trying last time, but... To me, means fit for the fight, fit to fight, same thing. But we're going to leave it at, are you fit for the fight? We began this series last week, and we learned about the aspect of fighting. And let me say, the topic of fighting is not something that most people want to talk about. I believe, right? I believe most people will turn away from a fight if they can. Now, there are some people that just love to fight, but I believe most people don't want to have to engage in fighting. Uh, at all, right? Especially those who, uh, uh, those of us who are Christ followers, we don't really relish fighting, okay? 
Those where because we're taught what we're taught to turn the other cheek, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We're taught to uh, uh, hmm, what Almost. forgive others how many times? Seventy seven. times, seven times, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, times, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even when they wrong you, we're taught not to fight it out, right? But that being true and the word of God and, and, and this issue of fighting is still something that must be addressed, right? It must be addressed not in the framework, framework of physical fighting, but as in spiritual fighting, amen? amen? Spiritual warfare, okay? We taught on that last week, if you recall. Pastor Annalisa was good enough to quote what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 5. It's talking about warfare, right? And while we did touch on that text a little bit, let's expand on it a little more. Let's go over it again in order to shed just a little more light on the meaning and also what it looks like in application. So I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa to please read 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5 for us one more time, please. 2 Corinthians chapters 10 verses 3 and 5 says three this. To five. 3 to 5 says this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. And then it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 tells us, Casting down arguments at every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. 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 Well, I could stay on this for a long time, but mm -hmm. we're just going to touch over it, okay? That's like a, a, a big old uh, rib roast right there or something. Uh, prime, prime rib. Prime rib, but we can't eat it all right now. So mm -hmm. let's just look at it. Uh, uh, all right, the focus here is on fighting. I could go all the way down and say, take every thought into captivity. What you're thinking, uh, uh, you need to run it through a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts need to go before it comes out of your mouth. Your thoughts need to be examined. Uh, 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 don't let it go out yet, okay? See yourself at the airport with the TSA and when they put your bag on the conveyor belt to see what's in there, okay? That's the way we have to examine our thoughts, amen? amen. Uh, and right here, you will notice the Word is telling us we cannot afford to wage war how? In the flesh, right? That's what it says right there in, in, in Scripture. And, uh, uh, let me get to the right page. Well, we don't walk got, in the got, flesh. Yeah, but okay. Though we don't walk in the flesh. So it's telling you right there, right? We don't walk in the flesh. Uh, for, the, for, for though we walk in the flesh, we cannot afford to war according to the flesh. That's what I'm trying to get to. So it's saying right there, we walk in the flesh, but we can't afford to do what? When you're warring, you're fighting. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You can't afford to fight in the flesh. Not, we, not if you're in Christ Jesus. We walk in the flesh, but we can't afford to fight in the flesh. That passage is telling us that, and although we operate and we walk that way, any fighting that occurred must be done how? In the Spirit. In the spirit. That's what it's telling us. So, uh, in adhering to the Scripture, it say, say for instance, someone calls you out of your name. Uh-oh. For no apparent reason. That happened to somebody in the church recently. He wasn't in the church when, when it happened. Thank God. Thank God nobody in the spirit of truth called him out of his name. But somebody called, Brother John, did they call you out of your name? Somebody called him out of his name for no reason, right? And we, it says uh, right here that uh, we can't afford to fight in the flesh. So if we adhere to that script, that scripture, it means if someone calls you out of your name for no reason, it rubs you the wrong way, and you quickly retaliate by calling them out of their name because you want to return the favor, of course. Or even worse, you can up the ante and go as far as to lay hands on them. Amen? Sometimes that happens. Now, this is not the laying of hands that we talk about in the Bible. I'm talking about laying hands on them. Sometimes that happens, <laughs> okay? But the Bible is telling us that we can't do it because that's walking in the flesh. Amen? You cannot lay hands on them to hurt them, okay? 
And if that occurs, you've just waged war in the flesh. I say that because it's happened to me. See? Now, I mentioned Brother John, and I let his name come out of my mouth too quick because uh, he may not have wanted that to know, be known. But, but sorry, Brother Johnny. But, but, Brother but when, somebody, when somebody called him out his name, Johnny didn't, he didn't return the favor. You know why? Because he's a man of God. See, because he's got this, he's got Jesus living in him. He's got enough of that word in him. His flesh may have been riled up. The hair on his neck probably was raising up. Heart might have started beating. May have started sweating like I do. <laughs> they, what, they think you're nervous. I say, yeah, I'm nervous for you, my friend. But, but he may have been, but he did not retaliate. He said, hold on, Henry. He held on, okay? Now, when that That's happened to is. me, and I was 19 years old in college, and nobody had ever done that to me before, and they did it to me. Oh, see, y'all, I didn't know Jesus. I laid hands on. I, I chased down the truck. Sister Liz know about it. I told her the story. It was quite funny. I'm not going to tell you all that now. It's, it's hilarious what happened. But, oh, yeah, I caught up with the truck, you all. The truck was stopped at a red light. It was a truck full of them. Anyway, I laid hands on them. And that was the wrong way to do red it. Light. It was a red light. And after calling me that name, after being so contrary to, 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 to the laws of God, they wanted to follow the laws of man, and they stopped at the red light. <laughs> that was their mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that was their mistake. <laughs> 19 years old, I could run for the I caught up with the truck, you all, at the red light. <laughs> and that was that. But it was the wrong decision on my part. It was the wrong fighting technique. If I had only known the Lord, that would not have happened. I was far from God back then, so I operated in my own limited wisdom. And you know who was fueling me then? The same person that was fueling them. Okay, this was spiritual warfare. That's what I mean about we cannot afford to fight in the flesh. Humans have some power. Remember I said that, but not all power. And my power was limited. My thought processes was limited. But God has what kind of power? All power. All power. Isn't that right? And that's mm -hmm. who I needed. And this passage tells us that God possesses this unlimited amount of power. So as a result, we who know Jesus, right, have at our disposal a vast array, uh, uh, a vast uh, array of weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we have a vast array of weapons with which we can fight. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but but the focus on fighting, of course, is what kind of fighting? Spiritual fighting, amen? Mm -hmm. We want to fight. If we must fight, let it be spiritual fighting. We know we're in a war, but it puts a whole different connotation on, on things. That makes sense. Spiritual fighting requires, uh, uh, I'm sorry, spiritual warfare requires spiritual fighting. Does that make sense? And this passage tells us that the weapons of our warfare are mighty, but through whom? Do God. Do God. He's got all power. Pastor Lisa just said he has all power, and that's where it comes from. So we're mighty through God. So what that should alert us to is that in order for us to be able to fight properly and effectively in spiritual warfare, we need to be operating under the auspices of God, under the control and the power of God, operating with the help and the support of God, operating in the guidance of God. Amen. How do you get there? How do you do it? We commonly hear Christians saying things like, Jehovah Jireh is my provider. Okay? We mm -hmm. say that a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly right. Because Jehovah God provides us with what is needed to be victorious in warfare. Amen? Amen. And watch this. Let's go to the book of Philippians. I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa to just read for us Philippians 4.13, please. And see what that tells us. Philippians 4.13. 413 tells us mm -hmm. this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. I can do some things by myself, but I can do all things through Christ 
I've got a little bit of know-how, I've got a little bit of ingenuity, but I can, uh, what I really need to do is access God because He can give me everything that I need. Just as I said before we started in Jeremiah 30, 30, 33 and 3, uh, when, he, when He said, call to me, and I'll answer you, I'll show you great and mighty things of which you don't know. All right, here we, here we see right here, He says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We don't know how far that goes, do we? So this scripture, uh, which is written by Apostle Paul, uh, declares that we can do or all we things. are able to do. How many all things? things? What kind of things? All, all things through Christ who Christ. strengthens us. Let us. That means that there is nothing that cannot be done if Christ has strengthened us to do it. Isn't that good? Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. What do you need done in your life today? What problems so are you having in your life today? What have you what have you studied that you can't seem to solve? What do you need to come to you that's not there yet? I guarantee you the word is saying that Christ can strengthen you in whatever you're going through today. What kind of dilemmas are you facing today where you can't seem to talk about anybody? You're going through this funk. This depression. What is it that you need to strengthen you? It says you can do it if you allow Christ to strengthen you. Amen. This is this is how we solve physical uh, spiritual warfare. This is one of the rudiments of fighting in spiritual warfare. That's what we're talking about. What do you have in your marriage that's causing friction in your life? Hmm? What are the things that's, that's keeping you on one end and somebody else on the other end when we need to be working cohesively unity. together? It's saying right here, the, the, what's breaking up the unity? Come on. It's saying right here, I can do it with the strength of God. Strength I can do God. it with the help of God. We yeah. can do it with the help of God. Right. Amen. 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 That means that there is nothing that cannot be done if Christ has strengthened us. Amen. And we've drawn upon the power of God in Christ Jesus. We've got to draw upon that power, you all. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. And, let, and you know what it takes? It takes studying to do it. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Amen. It, it, discipline yourself. It takes studying uh, uh, and coming to know God's word and God himself. Okay. What God requires of us in order for us to arrive at a level of fitness spiritually. Amen. If we want to be spiritually fit, spiritually. we have to come to uh, understand what the trainer is telling us. Amen. I said last week about the gunfighter, General uh, Hank Emerson, who we call the gunfighter, well known across the world. Uh, Stilly eyed lean and mean fighting machine and he said baby you got to be fit to fight mm. and he was right and there was nobody in my unit that didn't have to get up in the morning and run five miles you i'll tell you what he ran hundreds of pounds off of people if you had a dollar bill for every pound that he ran off of people you'd be kind of wealthy right now because he ran pounds off young men back in those days so we have to come to a level of fitness uh, spiritually, because as we discovered last week, being fit for a fight requires training, you all. Amen. It requires training, does it not? In other words, fighters have to train rigorously, 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 what's rigorous? Rigorously for a fight. Amen. Okay? Amen. In other words, as a matter of fact, do you know that boxers back in the day, back in my day, they had to run. If you were boxing, most trainers had you run one mile for each round you were going to fight. Now, how many rounds is it in a fight these days? Sister Elwanda know that. Sister Elwanda is a sports buff. Not many women know that. But it's about 10 round, 12 round fights. Amateurs fight three rounds. Okay, pros fight for anywhere from 6 to uh, 10 to 12 rounds. Okay, that means if you're training for a fight, say you got a fight coming up in... In, in, in January and you start training now in October, how many miles do you have to run if you're going to run a fight a 10, a 10 round fight? How many miles per day should you be running? 10 miles. How many people just run 10 miles a day? Not many. Not many people. That, you get in marathon uh, country. 
And do you know that back in the day, they fought 15 rounds, didn't they, Dave? As a matter of fact, back in the day, they fought some 50 round fight. Now, I don't think they ran that many uh, uh, miles way back in the 30s and the 40s and 20s. But in the 60s and 70s, when you had Muhammad Ali and these boxers like that fighting, them boys ran 15 miles a day. Karen for a 15 mile fight. You see Karen nodding? Karen don't know things too about fighting. Don't let, the, don't let the good looks fool you. Okay? Don't let the baby girl looks fool you. That's a little fighter, a spiritual fighter. She knows, see? Now she ain't gonna hit you with a fish. She gonna hit you with the word BAM! That's what she does. But I'm saying that to fight in the spirit. Those boxers running 10 to 15 miles a day. You were expected to do that per day. Now, if you were going to fight, it, now listen to this. I'm using this analogy so you can see something. If you're going to get ready for a fight, it takes you three to six months to get ready. That's why fighters don't fight every month. They fight three, four fights a year because they got to recuperate. And your body takes a beating in more than one way. So if you're going to get ready for a fight, let's say you're going to fight... Uh, Mike Tyson, and this might be your last fight, by the way. <laughs> but if you do, <laughs> you, you got to get ready for that fight. So you're going to start fighting, say, in October, and the fight is in February. So you're running 10 miles a day for the next three, four months. You're going to be in some kind of shape, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Because you're running like a marathon, and you're running 10 miles a day. In addition, that's not the end of it, is it? you got to do calisthenics, sit-ups. You got to do leg raises. You got to do tons of push ups. You got to jump rope till your corns hurt. You got to hit the heavy bag. <laughs> some, some people got bunions, but you still got to fight, okay? You got to hit the heavy bag. You got to do your bag work. And then you have to spar with other fighters. This is the weekly, you all. That's why I respect boxers so much. That's why you have sports in the Bible, because it's talking about. Adversity is talking about discipline, it's talking about training. You get up in the morning before the sun comes up and you start your road work. You go to the beach with combat boots on and you run till your tongue hang out. And somebody is running along with you on a bicycle or in a car, but you're doing the road work yourself. We need to think about that when it comes to showing up for God. No, shouldn't. We need to think about that when we think about getting up in the morning to show up at prayer. Huh? Amen. Huh? That type of thing. You're in battle. Why not? Spiritual okay. Warfare. Spiritual warfare. So, and again, this is in regards to physical fighting, obtaining a level of physical fitness, enabling you to excel victoriously in a physical fight. Now then, well, if we switch the focus to the spiritual realm, can you imagine the training that needs to be in effect in order for you to become fit to fight that the fight that God knows is in line for you? Mm, speak, Lord. You don't even know who you're going to fight. Daily. God knows who you've got to fight daily. But we got to work out just the same. Look at it this way, family. If you have to put in the type of work that I just described... In, uh, in the type of training for a physical fight with an opponent that you can see, imagine the training intensity needed in fighting demons which you can't see. Amen. Does that make sense? Okay? All right then. That's going to take some work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it? It just makes sense. You don't have to be Einstein to figure this out. You don't, you don't have to get in your prayer closet. Don't have to lay on your face. Just think about it. With the brain that God gave us, that's going to take work. Now, let's look again at the same word and what it says about soldiering in this aspect. Pastor, take us to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, please. 2 Timothy 2, mm -hmm. 3 to 5. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it says this. 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 5 says this. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Then it says no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. All right. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not 
crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor. All right. Here again, we see in our Bibles an example of what being a soldier means. Amen. Soldiers are involved in what? Warfare. Warfare. Much of the time. Much of the time. If they're not involved in it, they're getting ready for it. If they're not involved in it, they're training for it. Peacetime and wartime, that's what it's about. It's about protection. We talked about fighting uh, last week, that it is defending yourself. It is uh, 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 going against an opponent. This is what soldiers do. And in this passage, it's telling us not only the importance of soldiering or being a soldier, but it also tells us the importance of being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. See, yeah, Jesus doesn't want also reigns. Jesus, see, we, I said it's a team concept. There are no bench warmers in Christ. There's nobody that just sits on the bench with a clean uniform. Okay? God's got you here for a reason. God's mm -hmm. got us here for a reason. He's going to hone us and shape us, but there's some work that has to be done. Okay? Mm -hmm. We just went over what it takes to be a fighter who is fit for an upcoming physical fight and all the training, the rigors of training, the sacrifice and everything. Well, here we see that when it comes to being a good soldier, a good fighter for the cause of Christ, for Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, you must endure hardship as well. That's the way it is, you all. This passage takes us even further. Pastor, read that verse again for us. I want to concentrate on verse 4. Would you read verse 4 for us? Just verse Second 4. Timothy no 2, one 4. engaged. Yeah. No one mm -hmm. engaged in warfare entangles himself with the, after, uh, with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. All right. Thank you again. So nice we have to read it twice. Listen. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier in the first place. Did you all hear that? Mm -hmm. It's telling us that in order to be a good soldier for Christ, you 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 can't you cannot be a you you you, you can't allow yourself to be entangled with the affairs of this life. Let's say that again. Huh? In order to be a good soldier for Christ. You cannot Can allow not. yourself to be swayed, caught up, it says entangled in the New King James, entangled with the affairs of this life. All right? That's what it's yeah. saying. You know why? Because you're not here to please this world or the people in this world or this life. You're here to please him who enlisted you as a soldier in the first place. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now think about it. Think about it, you all. There are churches who say they are believers in Christ. Okay? But are operating like the world. Mm -hmm. Huh? Listen now. There are churches that, that say they're like Christ. That say they operate like Christ. They're going to celebrate Halloween in a few weeks. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. They may not call it Halloween, but they're going to celebrate Halloween because they're going to look at the world. Am I right? We've seen it before. Okay. They're going to mimic it. Amen. Now, I understand the things that are associated with it, but just an example. There are also so-called pastors, so-called Christian vocalists trying to, rip, trying to win awards and accolades like the world. Amen. When it says God is not a respecter of person, I don't think when we get to heaven, they're going to say, now for the angel of the year. I don't think we're going to see that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we're going to, God's going to say, come on up. They've been waiting for you. Uh, uh, pastor of the year award. You got that? Come on up. This is the pastor that I saw at the Dove Awards. I don't think we're going to see that in heaven. Hmm. Huh? I don't think we're going to see any of that. I think we're all servants of the, you know, if the, if, the, if the 24 elders are throwing their crowns down, I think we're going to be throwing down some crowns, you all. Mm -hmm. huh? I don't think we're going to be saying, that, where's my award? You're going to get, you're going to get some, some, some perks, but it's not going to be those kind. Nothing that mimics the world. Amen. Amen. We, but we're seeing churches that, churches that are doing these things, and none of this has anything to do with what God wants for us. 
That's why the scripture says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is what? Not, not in, in him. Not in her. Not in you. Not in me. Not if we love the world. That's why the scripture says it. We're not to be entangled with the affairs of this life, but him who enlisted us as soldiers. Amen. Huh? Come on now. Amen. Think about that, my friends, because this is what you need to think about. Who called you to be saved? Jesus. Was it the world? No. Was it the award show? No. Huh? Dave's pointing up, Pastor down. Lisa said it was Jesus. That, that's right. I think so. I I don't think it was the world at all, okay? Because when you become saved, I mean, what happens when you become saved? Change, do you do, what do you who do you come to? Jesus. Who do you come? What do you come out of? The world. The world, amen. When you become saved, you're coming out of the world and into Christ. Yes. You we're coming out of the world, like we're it. coming into Christ. And to look like him, like and talk like That's it. right. You you take on the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. You be, you, Paul said you become imitators of Christ, mm -hmm. dear friends. Amen. That's what he, That's said. What he said. That's Amen. What he said. You come out of that stuff. You come to Christ Jesus. You come to God Almighty. You come to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and you won't find him in the things of the world. Amen. If you're saved, if you're saved, you know it was Christ who saved you, Amen. not the world. In fact, he saved you from the world, didn't he? Thank you. Am I right? Come on now. And that's why we cannot afford to be taken away or entangled with the things of this life. I'm getting back to the scripture now. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy uh, uh, chapter 2. two. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Uh, you cannot be entangled four. with the things mm -hmm. of your verse 4. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. No one engages in, war in warfare and entangles him with the, himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. See? You see, saying there, we're not here to please the world, but to please Jesus, who is the creator of the world. We need Thank to keep that in mind. Amen. Thank You're not here to conform the standards of the world, but uh, the standards of God through Christ. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Okay. So if we're going to be soldiers and good soldiers at that, uh, we must endure hardships as in rigorous uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. And do it as with competing according to the rules. Mm -hmm. You all get that? Amen. Uh, whose rules? God's rules. God's rules. Jesus rules. Almighty Who rules? God, God rules. Mm -hmm. If God rules, we're going to go by his rules. Amen. 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 That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I hope we're getting this, you all. God wants you and me, each and every one of us, trained to the point that we are fit for the fight or the fights to come. Amen. Because there's more than one. Yes, Dave. And you know there are more than, there's more than one fight that you're going to have to go through, mm -hmm. champ. I'm here to tell you there's more than one fight that we're going to have to go through. Some of you are going through some things right now. But at least if you're married, that's you one. Children? That's one fight. Another yes. fight, you got children. That's another fight you're going to go. Some of you all got grand and great-grandchildren, amen? Then you got those friends, those fair-weather friends. I said fins. Well, what does that mean? That they got scales? I don't know. But you've got some fair-weather friends, supervisors on the job. you got people that won't do what you ask them to do. you got all kinds of things going on. There are going to be fights, you all. you got neighbors. you got people that don't like you because of the way you look or because of your... Your, 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 whatever the case may be. It and, and it's all being, the pot is all being stirred by demons. Mm -hmm. So you got to see these things. Yeah, so let's do this. Uh, uh, let's go to the book of Romans. Because you're not just in uh, one fight, one and done. Go to Romans oh, 12, yeah. verses 1 to 2. You all know this. If I can read it before we even get to it. Second Timothy, I mean, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 1, 2. Mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Please. Okay, so 1 and 2 says this. I beseech you, brethren. No, yeah, mm -hmm, Romans 12, right. 1 and 2. I beseech you, brother. I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but, but, be, tra but mm -hmm. be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Paul says he, to prove it. Prove it. Okay. Prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's where we're headed, you all. That's where we're headed. So much in this that I can't read it all. So much in it, I want to go straight to that point, but I can't. I got to go back up for what the Lord gave me here. Uh, uh, Paul says we ought to do what? Present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. And Paul goes on to say that this is what kind of service? Reasonable. This is our reasonable service, meaning it's expected of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Reasonable worship. Reasonable uh, 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 adherence to God's word over and over again. Does that mean uh, 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 doing what the Lord tells you to do sometimes all the time? All the time. It's our reasonable service, okay? Mm -hmm. Showing up when you're supposed to show up, okay? Mm -hmm. Showing up when you don't feel like showing up. Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. That's consistency. That's discipline. That's what God is looking for in soldiers. Okay? Mm -hmm. Making the hard call when you say I should, we should do it this way. And God said, did not say do it that way. You go the other way. You do what God tells you to do. But they're not going to like me, Lord. They're not going to understand me. Well, they don't like me and they didn't understand me either. But you do it my way. See, this is what the Lord is telling us in these scriptures right here. Mm -hmm. It's our reasonable service to do what God tells us to do. That's why you got to know if he's speaking to you or not. Mm -hmm. That's the relationship. That's where the training yes, and the yes. running of miles in the spirit. Logging in miles in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. It's expected of us. Well, now does that mean that anything to do with being a good soldier for Christ or being a fighter looking to be fit for the up, uh, upcoming opposition? You better believe it does. That's what it means. Okay. Because watch this. If we use a boxer, a fighter example, let's use that example again. What happens in boxing? We know that in boxing there's a term called making the weight. Y'all ever heard of that? We call it making weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. That kind of weight, not, not W-A-I-T. Now, I'm not mean we're going to make you weight. It means making weight. You see, when a fighter has a fight, he's got to fight at a certain weight. They put you in a weight category. Heavyweight, lightweight, bottom weight, flyweight, straw weight. They got all kinds of weights for small guys, big guys, large guys, different weight. You've got to make weight. So what they do to be fair, you have to come in at a certain weight. If you're a heavyweight, I think it's 190 pounds and up. So you're not going to see a guy... Uh, uh, 190 fighting middleweight, which is around 140, 45 pounds. You've got to make weight. So that means that fighters, guys that like to eat, if you're a guy that likes to eat, guess what? You're going to have to trim down to make weight depending on where you're fighting, right? And so that means you, you won't be allowed to compete if you don't make weight according to the rules. Huh? You hear where this is going? Are you hearing me? I hope so, because God is no different. Okay? God has a specific training regimen huh, that we are to undergo in order to be engaged in just as in the physical fight. He wants us, the physical fighter, you, as a, in a physical fight, you've got to shed your skin. And in a spiritual fight, you've got to shed some sin. That's what God <laughs> is talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got to make weight. God wants you light, okay? Amen. He wants you light for the fight. He wants you to be able to fight all night. He doesn't want you tired. He wants you to be able to endure, like Paul yes, said. Yes. To endure. That's what he's talking about. You've got to lose a certain amount of poundages, okay? A certain amount of poundage, in other words, right? Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to know that we need to shed some weight of adultery. We need to shed some weight 
when it comes to fornication, we've got to, we've got to trim down quick when it comes to hard-heartedness and pride. You've got to drop that load. You've got to jealousy, idolatry, envy, hard-heartedness. we got to lose it. Okay? Before God can use you to the, to the, to, 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 to the point that he wants to use you. That's what we're talking about. Before we can ever expect to get into the boxing ring in the spiritual arena. Praise the fight that you are lined up for and face our opponent, we've got to become fit for the fight. Fit yeah. for the fight. Come on, y'all. You know that's right. Praise God. So just as a boxer in the natural has to make weight, the Lord Almighty requires us to make weight spiritually. Ooh, thank you. And, 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 and in this passage that Pastor just read, right here in Romans, Romans 12, 1 and 2, Spiritual. again, it's reminding us that we are to be living sacrifices. Uh, that means that you're going to be used over and over again. Your fighting career ain't hardly over. Some of you went through some things. You had a surgery. Now you got another surgery. Sister Leah's had another surgery right on top of a surgery. You think that little warrior, she still has to fight. Nah, she had to shed some things, okay? Her comfort, uh, maybe her security. Maybe her faith even wavered. I don't think so, but maybe she said, oh, well, I'm running again. Here it comes again. Here it comes again. You see what I mean? Brother Terry, road warrior. He running right now. He running back and forth physically, but it's a spiritual training. Yeah, the devil is after him. Not only is he is he going through the training, but he's helping to train his brother? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. God says, are you fit, Terry? Are you fit for the fight? Are you fit, Liz? Are you fit for the fight? Mm, Danielle. Danielle. Danielle's been waiting and waiting and waiting for this thing to work itself out at her job. Waiting and waiting with the pain and, and can't get the people to act right. Sister Yolanda with the ant patrol. We can go on and on. Now, I don't know what she's talking about, Sister Yolanda, but Pastor Alisa just said, Sister Yolanda with the ant patrol. I don't know what that means. I wasn't in on that one. But whatever, <laughs> whatever that means, okay? There are fights, and there are fights. We're living sacrifices. See, we got to think of what we're fighting with the spiritual battle, you all. Yes, yes, huh? yes. God's going to use you for his glory and your good, mm. getting you into a level of faith fitness, uh, fit for duty, so to speak, okay? Yes. Not physical fitness per se, but spiritual fitness all the way. That's what God is talking about. And depending on the assignment, the teaching, etc., that God has in store for you, you need to understand that you will need to make weight. Yes, W-E-I-G-H. That's right, make weight, okay? Are you with me, church? And this is for all churches. This is for all churches. This is for all of us who say that we are Christ followers, who say, that, yes, the Lord is, the, is my, the Lord is guiding me. I'm, I'm a disciple of Christ. Well, okay. All right. the weight of sin. That's right. God says, make way. So, as we get ready to close out for today, let me ask Pastor Annalisa to read one more text of scripture for us, which is found in 1 Corinthians Pastor, take us to uh, 1 Corinthians, please, chapter 9, verses 25 and 27, and then I think we can get ready to 1 Corinthians out. 9, 25 and 27 please. tells us this. Please. 9. Okay, 9, then 27. 25 and 27. Okay, it says, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things, now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my discipline. body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to, to others, I myself should become disqualified. All righty, all right. Thank you, Pastor. All right. So just to sum up here, Paul uses a metaphor, amen. He's using a metaphor of an athlete uh, who, who uh, engaged in competition, seeking a prize, a trophy, maybe a gold medal, some other perishable trinket, okay? 
which is all good in the, in the physical. But Paul stresses that we as believers strive seeking what is imperishable, not what is perishable. What won't rust, rot, or ruin? What, something that you can't get your hands on, but you can wrap it around your spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Your soul, your future with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, eternally. Amen. The things that are eternal, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Yes. And that requires what? Discipline. Spiritual discipline that can only come from God's unlimited reservoir of power, which he will make available to each and every born again, saved Christian. Amen? Amen? That's what we're talking about. Anyone willing to submit to the Lord. That's what this scripture yes. is talking about. Disciplining our bodies, our minds, uh, because our spirits are disciplined. Don't you know that when your spirit is disciplined, your mind quickly follows? Amen. 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 When you run with the Lord and you give him control of your life and the Holy Spirit is guiding you, your members are going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's what we have to think about. So this, that is what this scripture is telling us. It says, but I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection. At least when I, at least when I, less when I, when I have preached to others, I myself may even be disqualified. Hmm, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means practice what you preach. <laughs> huh, that yeah. old Barry White song. You remember that song? Practice what you, you practice what you preach, in other words. Yes. Don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word. Huh? Let's just go around singing. Barry used to do that. Ah, that's something wrong with me. He used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's was wrong if you don't know the Lord, okay? <laughs> but, but, something was wrong with Barry. <laughs> but uh, I like Barry White. I pray he knew the Lord. But I'm just saying, okay, this is something that we have to do. And this is what God has called us to do. Make the way, fellas, ladies. Make the way, okay? So in closing, may we all show ourselves present and accounted for, willing to undergo whatever is necessary in order to answer appropriately when the Lord asks the question, are you fit for the fight? He's not asking because he doesn't know. He's asking because he wants you to know. He wants you to look at yourself and say, am I fit? Are you fit for the fight? God willing, we will continue next time in this same series. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, to those of you who don't know Jesus, again, I'm not going to ask you, are you fit for the fight? I'm going to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to go into training? Because you're in, a, you're in warfare anyway. You're already in it. If you're born into this world, you've got to go through the fighting sequence. Things are going to come your way. But you need to know the Lord to get through it. Amen. To really get through it. If Jesus came back today and he called his people up, which he will, and we don't know when the day or the hour is. You don't want to be left behind. You want to be able to go with God. We always use the term, go with God, my friend. No, you, you go with God by getting with Jesus. Okay? That's what you do. And there's no better time than now. I'm telling you, the clock is ticking. There's so much going on. We're on the verge of World War III. We're on the verge of catastrophic problems. We're on the verge of maybe who knows when but our children if not in our generation our children and their children are going to need the Lord Amen. we can't be stymied by the threat of radiation flesh being burned off of people we, we, we can't be worried about it if we know the Lord amen we need to get to know Jesus. You need to get to know Jesus. You need to know that you're saved. Sure, we can still live life, and we're, we're going to be happy about the good things and the creature comforts that are there. We, yeah, 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 you still can go to Disneyland and all those other things, but I'm telling you, there's more. 
behind the scenes and the devil wants you distracted so that you don't know and you go through all of this and you leave out of here without knowing Jesus, where will you go then? I implore you to get to know Jesus, to let him get you ready for the true fighting, the true fighting that's going on behind the scenes. Don't be distracted. Don't let the world fool you. Don't let the devil fool you. There's more to it than meets the eye. I'm going to pray a prayer for you, and if any of this is registering with you right now, if you believe any of this, I hope you have faith to believe that Jesus died for you. And if you repent your sins today and accept him as Lord and Savior, that you will be saved. And he'll protect you from the wrath to come. Pray this prayer for me, with me now. Don't pray it for me, pray it with me. And say, Lord, I'm a sinner. But I repent my sins to you right now. I believe that you are God. Lord, you died for us and you were raised from the dead. Would you come into my life now and be my savior? I'll do my best to follow you all the days of my life. This I pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, congratulations. You're now a child of God. You are now a part of the kingdom. The Bible tells us that Jesus died for us. The word became flesh and we beheld his glory, amen. Glory as to the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It's true, His grace will extend to you as His child, child of God. All you need to do is get yourself a Bible. Start reading it, studying it. Get yourself a good study Bible, one of those good thick ones. And start reading it and let the Holy Spirit come to you. He's going to help you. He's going to lead you into all truth. You're going to have a smile on your face even when you're sad sometimes. Your, the, the corners of your mouth are still going to so they're going to curl up a little bit. And you, well, yeah, you know what? But I still have Jesus. He's going to give you unspeakable joy. Amen. He's going to give you unspeakable joy, and he's going to teach you how to get stronger and how to become fit for the fight. Amen. So we're going to pray. Uh, uh, we're going to pray. And then we're going to let you all have your day. Uh, and we'll, we'll call it for today. Okay, yeah. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for everyone who, who sat in, Lord. I thank you for everyone who may have joined us and those who will join later. We know you know who's going to hear this, Lord, as your word goes out and our return is void. As you said in your scripture in Isaiah 55, 11, Lord, we know it's going out and it won't return void. So, Lord, I'm praying for, for all of us, Lord. And there are some of us who need things, Lord, better help, better provision, financial security. Lord, some of us just need uh, to be looked at and let the doctors do what they're supposed to do, uh, Lord God, and, and the rigors that our bodies have taken uh, that have taken a toll on our bodies through years of servitude for our jobs. And now the devil wants to come in and do other things. Lord, help them. Help Sister Danielle. Help others, Lord, who are going through struggles. Keep us all safe. Sister Deborah Diggs, Lord, who's working uh, uh, with the public, Lord God. Still out there. Brother Larry. Sister Ruth, Lord, and others. Uh, Brother Miles and Sister Helen, Lord, both a couple together, Lord, trying to navigate the waters of life. I could name everybody on this on, on this page, Lord. Sister Wanda, Public Transportation, Brother Terry and Patricia, everyone, Lord, who's going through something. Sister Yolanda, Lord, who is helping to teach young people while she's going through her struggles with and everything else with Brother Johnny along with her. Sister Roz, Lord God, and Brother Donald, Sister Karen, Dave, and his mother, Lord, and everyone else that he's praying for. Lord, help us all. Sister Marsha, Lord, uh, who's uh, always praying for her sons, Lord, who are first responders and their families, Lord, not to mention the, the uh, personal things that they have to go through. Lord, God bless them as well. Everybody who I can see on here, Lord, who's going through something, Lord, touch them. So touch them, Sister Lizette and others, Lord. Bless us all and keep us, Lord. You know, we want to thank you for our guests, Lord. Uh, Ms. Megan Wood, uh, Pastor Harriman, Lord God, as always, we thank that brother, Lord, this young lion. Continue to keep him in the faith, Lord God. Let him be an example to other young pastors, Lord God. As Pastor Alisa's nephew, wonderful man of God, a pastor, Lord God. And also, keep
Kenny McElroy, Lord. Bless our brother. Lord God, bless him. Bless his family, Lord. Bless his lineage and everyone else, Lord. Continue to keep them. Now, Father, we thank you for being who you are, the God of all creation, the first, the last, the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you, Lord, for continuing to give us everything we need for you. We know it's you who keeps us from falling and presents us faultless in the presence uh, of your glory, Lord, and everything else you, say, you, you have put in your word to you be the glory and the majesty and everything that, that is uh, promised, Lord, according to your will. Let it be so. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, if you all agree, would you please say amen, amen, amen. amen.